brotherhood of man. How to succeed in business without really trying. Um, tell me about Finch's character. Well, this was very controversial at the time. There was even an article in Reader's Digest when How to Succeed opened about, is this the type of person we really want as a main character in a musical? Because he is very, very clever slash sneaky in the way that he is going to get to the top of this company. He starts off in the lowest position he possibly can get. But even before he gets that lowest position and rises to the top by the end of the show, it's very interesting that at the beginning of the show, he happens to uh, be walking into the place and there's the head of the company, Mr. Bigley, and they smash into each other. And um, he says, I want a job. And Bigley says, I, I, I'm, I have people to do that for me. I, you don't talk to me for a job. Go see Mr. Whatever. So he goes to see Mr. Whatever. And uh, he says, uh, yeah, I was just sent here by Mr. Bigley. You know, um, I just bumped into him and he sent me here. Well, just bumped into him is a cliche that usually means uh, far more than just literally bumping into each other. So uh, so the guy assumes that um, they're close and uh, bumps into them, suggests that you've met before. You know, it just does. So as a result, um, he gets the job. What is a miracle to me, by the way, a miracle, I don't understand it to this day, um, is that it won the Pulitzer Prize. Now, in those days, the Pulitzer Prize specifically had a clause saying it should aggrandize American life. Uh, that's not the terminology, but it was supposed to be a pro-optimistic, you know, nice thing about American life, you know, as much as possible, uh, or at least tell the truth about American life. And I mean, this show was so satiric, it, 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 it struck me as very odd. Now, you might say, well, of course, the Pulitzer Prize went to of the I Sing, which was satiric as well. But the people in there were far more well-meaning than indeed uh, Finch's in How to Succeed. He really is a selfish human being if you really want to come down to brass tacks. And uh, and yet, it may have been the changing mood of the company, a country that indeed uh, we were getting a little more savvy. The Eisenhower years were over. Yeah, there was optimism with Kennedy, who had just been in the White House um, nine months earlier. He took his inauguration vows. But but still, there's something to be said about the fact that we were starting to be a little more savvy, and the fact that um, that Finch could be viewed as somebody we admired for getting around the system. We admired him for that in a very strange way. Part of that had to do with the fact that Robert Morse, the original caster, who did his part in the movie as well, um, was boyish and didn't seem like that much of a threat. Why is Brotherhood of Man such a great 11 o'clock number? Robert Morse used to turn to the audience as if to say, see, see, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just a lucky guy. That's all there is to it. It always works out for me. And so the joyousness there, and especially the fact that he's talking about the brotherhood of man, when he certainly has nothing to do with the brotherhood of man. I mean, he, he, <laughs> uh, that's kind of fun. But the, the song is so delightful. And to watch those two people dance together is really marvelous. Um, Sondheim once said, it's very hard for guys in suits to dance because suits are after all representing formality of a certain type. And yet Bob Fosse, who after all was quite the genius, was able to make those guys in suits get away with it um, when they're singing Brotherhood of Man. Um, it's, it's kind of quirky choreography. Uh, it's a little over the top, but boy, the number is so joyous. And the fact that we became to worry about uh, Finch so much and the fact that uh, he got out of it makes that number such a welcome relief uh, that um, I, I truly believe is the best 11 o'clock number of all time. In second place is Sit Down, You're Rocking the Boat, which ironically enough was written by the same guy, Frank Lesser. He wrote both of those. Peter Felicia's Broadway appears in every issue of the Broadway Maven's Weekly Blast.